Hello, this is Matt from Montreal, KC3FOW Ham Radio. I am bringing this video to you today to talk about the MMDVM project, and specifically in the context of this video, it will be to convert your Yesu System Fusion DR1X to an MMDVM type of a repeater. You might ask yourself, what is MMDVM and who cares? Uh, MMDVM was a project conceived by Jonathan, Jonathan Naylor and it basically is a, um, the, the whole concept was to be able to create a modem that would receive and transmit on different modes uh, that, that were programmed to it. P25, which is a digital radio mode, um, DMR, Yesu System Fusion, D-Star, probably a couple other ones as we speak that are being developed for. The components that are required for an MMDVM uh, are an MMDVM modem board, a microcontroller of some sort, uh, computer, and obviously a radio. Uh, and in this case, I'll be converting the Yesu System Fusion DR1X, which is natively created for the Yesu System Fusion. I will be converting that to DMR. Uh, I also will enable Yesu System Fusion on the MMDVM board as well uh, to try to show you that. Now what I've done in this, this video is I've broken some of the components out. Uh, I'm using the Arduino Duo, D-U-E, which is a popular microcontroller. Um, I'm using Bruce Givens board which is 1.0. I built it, uh, micro soldered it with some special equipment, microscope and some hot air uh, rework tool and uh, created the board from blank. I ordered it, it came blank and I ordered the components from DigiKey and uh, soldered those and I recommend that highly. It's a lot of fun to micro solder and put together your own boards and you get a better sense of satisfaction of actually building it yourself. But you can purchase it uh, if you go to mmdvm.com. Um, there's a new version of it, 1.01. 1 .01. Uh, there's specifically some errors on the schematic but he um, talks about it in his, his parts list that he gives and there's one section where there's polarity uh, on a capacitor, I think it's C20. That's, that's flipped around, so you have to read the instructions before you assemble. Anyway, uh, this project's going to talk about how to do it, what are the, the pieces that I used, and feel free to, to use your own different parts and explore the mmdvm.com. There's a lot of smart people out there. In this case, this is going to just, just suffice uh, to uh, use the standard components that, that are commonly used in this project and uh, to, to convert the Yesu System Fusion uh, repeater. Um, you might ask, well, why, why should I convert the Yesu System, Yesu system uh, repeater uh, into DMR or any other mode? And the answer is it's, it's a great repeater, but it's not being all that it can be. And you can really expand its abilities, uh, and it's a, it's a wonderful repeater for the price. It just, Yesu System Fusion and um, all the firmware updates and things to make it stable, I, I think Yesu could have done a better job, but that's just opinion. At any rate, I, I think you'll enjoy this project if you're a ham radio operator, and we'll get right into it here. So. Without uh, further bloviating, I will uh, start and give you some. Delving right in, this is the first screen of the DRX1 fixed FM on both sides. Second screen shows the frequencies and the power. Third screen shows the uplink and the deviation mode transmit power. Fourth screen is important, remote is on, the rest are off. Fifth screen, again, the wide and low power, just to keep showing you there. Uh, and let's see what else we got. Okay, so the, the, the trick here is to use the, in this screen here, is to use um, the packet 
mode of 9600 baud, you have to click on the top uh, number there uh, the of the uh, uplink and choose 9600 baud. You'll see your DRX will change to the baud rate that you desire. Next you have the zone board picture and the right hand side is a connector. Now you have a different view of the zone board and you see both receive and transmit pots. As you can see on this board it's uh, a lot of small parts and uh, a lot of micro soldering but it's it's fun. At any rate uh, there's two potentiometers. Uh, this one here is the one that you will um, turn uh, the volume received and the other one here is the one you will uh, adjust. This one is critical and when you are adjusting it you will turn it like it's a uh, uh, well you've got to focus like a sniper if you will and turn it a gnat's leg width each time and key up your radio that is the way I tune mine in. A quick note on port forwarding you'll need to forward your cable modems uh, ports so that when you talk with the Raspberry Pi to the desired network specific ports on TCP IP need to be opened and forwarded back to your device. If you don't have that set up then you will get no response and you'll also have trouble maintaining the connection. So static your IP address on your Pi if I was you and look into port forwarding and or demilitarized zone for the device. Here you're going to notice that the pins on the ZUM are from left to right 1 through 6. Next you'll notice the picture of the ZUM pinouts itself. Now what you're going to see here is that there's the green line from 10 to 5 to 1 to 11. They're all ground. So ground is ground the world around and you notice that uh, on, on that connection that pins 3 and 4 are also tied together to that. Uh, the left hand side is the DR1X Yesu Fusion. The right hand side is the ZUM. Make sure that you have those set properly. And although you'll see some other conversations about pin 6, you want to use pin 7 for the purposes of this video and installation. Eric Osterberg, who wrote this diagram, wrote pin 10 and 15 to show that you can power the Raspberry Pi directly from the repeater's pinouts. There's a 12 volt DC that you would have to purchase a transformer to transform that uh, down to 5 volt DC to power the Pi if you so desire and you can go into a, a set of pins on, on the Pi. That's what that piece of diagram is. I personally power my Pi through a transformer directly into the wall but I think his option there is really more efficient. I may change to that. Let's talk quickly about the recipe of hardware and software ingredients you need to get started. For all intents and purposes, you can use whatever microcontroller and computer you want, but it has to be on the supported list. And the supported list, if you go to Git GIT Hub and you type in MMDVM project, you can pull up the the um, the specs on the MMDVM uh, project. At any rate, let's start out with what I used. Um, the Raspberry Pi 3 is a small microcomputer. It's about the size of an index card. It has four USB ports. It has um, built-in HDMI video. You have to have a cable to, uh, to talk to an HDMI uh, video source. And it needs a power supply. It's five volts. And you can purchase this thing in a kit. And uh, typically the board and the power supply, you need a keyboard and a mouse. So I got the little uh, the kit that has the uh, wireless keyboard with the mouse pad. It kind of sucks, but it works. At any rate, uh, the the other thing you need for the Pi is a SD card. It's it plugs into the bottom of the um, Pi. It's called a micro SD card. I got a 32 gig one, and um, let's take a look at that. I got one of these SanDisk 32 gig micro SD cards with the uh, the adapter that plugs into my computer and my computer will see it as a drive 
and uh, you can burn an image to that pie, which is a, you download the image. I, I made an image of my own. I'm going to be including it in the description. You can download my image if you like, uh, or somebody else. It doesn't matter. I use Raspbian, um, Raspbian the latest version, and uh, I put a few other utilities on it as well. So the Pi, the card, and you're going to need some kind of a microcontroller. The microcontroller that's the most popular right now, I think, for the Zumboard, the Zumboard actually is, uh, uh, physically fits on the top of this like a cape. It uh, plugs into the, the top of this Arduino microcontroller, and the two of them together create the, the modem. You have to flash the Arduino microcontroller with the firmware that's uh, created. You have to compile it and flash that, and um, it uh, creates creates a modem. That The microcontroller with the Zumboard creates a modem, and you can use a different different microcontrollers. There's some development for an ST out there and uh, anyway, for the intents and purposes here this Arduino Due, D-U-E, is what you look up in eBay. And if you go to um, mmdvm.com, this is Bruce Givens' site. He created the Zumboard and then you click on the products and pricing you'll see the newest uh, Zumboard is called a 1.0 and he offers the whole thing together if you want to buy the deal together uh, for $85 in shipping or just $60 for the, the 1.01 version. 1.01 is the newest version. I have the 1.0. Uh, the 1.0 required a clock uh, on certain situations and uh, the, the clock circuit was uh, to keep the Arduino due uh, in time. So those things are needed. Plus, um, if you want, an option um, is the retail SDR. This is a uh, uh, SDR radio that uh, typically is used to surf the airwaves and view the signals and, and what it's looking like, the whole spectrum. It's a um, spectrometer, if you will, uh, for, for radio. You can tune into different circuits. I'm using this to tune the the uh, the card the zumboard because the zumboard has potentiometers on it that need tuned here is the win32 disk imager program that you use to do the flashing of the sd card for the raspberry pi so you download the image you download this program here install it and you burn that image to the drive letter that appears for your SD card and then you take the SD card plug it into the Pi and boot the Pi up and life should be uh, beginning for you for your um, project so next we'll talk about the other steps okay here's the Raspberry Pi hooked up to the Arduino Do with a zoom board on the back I don't have the cable plugged into the repeater this is just the bench portion of it. I'll show you at some point with it hooked up to the repeater. But here's the Arduino Do and the Zom. Over here's the Pi. And if you notice, I can show you that I have a retail SDR 2.0 version uh, with this little antenna hooked up, and I've got an extender cable um, hooking from the Pi all the way to the programming port of the Arduino Do. The HDMI cable and the power cable to the Raspberry Pi. The HDMI hooks up to the monstrosity of a monitor that I have here uh, mounted on my wall and I made an image and basically what I've done here is pre-canned everything so that you can you can just basically flash this image and you'll have this nice little logo and it has the start button it looks like a zumboard I'm trying to customize it and I'll probably customize a few more of the uh, icons but all the utilities that you need uh, the Arduino do utility so you can plug your Arduino right into your Pi to do the uh, firmware flash you can edit your MMDVM you can do the calibration the background service and the start so there's different different pieces of it there's a chromium web browser 
I've renamed it a little bit. I called it Control Panel, uh, Pi Utilities. I, I kind of use my own terminology because I was trying to minimize all the garbage that they had on the other image. I took an image from the uh, DMR Utah and I added the MD380 tool so you can flash the uh, MD380 DMR radio with the um, current version of the hack software from a guy by the name of Travis Goodspeed, I believe. And uh, it's an awesome, awesome package to overwrite the firmware on your MD380 or your 390 so that uh, it'll have extra c capabilities. Also included the retail SDR spectrum analyzer. It's called Freak Show, F R E Q S H O W. That will um, allow you to tune it in, tune the, uh, the Zumboard's uh, potentiometers right here um, into the proper frequencies and um, the update uh, the flash uh, on if you have a 380 to update your flash um, user CSV so start out you're gonna want to when you get this image you're gonna want to join your Pi to the network that you have mine's called Sputnik I joined it uh, it's using the Wi-Fi interface right now it, and it, what you'll want to do is you'll want to Google how to set a static IP address on a Raspberry Pi and actually probably hardwire but you don't need to I mean it, it's just I do that and I forward ports from my router to the hardwired connection I just think it's much cleaner once you uh, get this all set you're gonna have the VNC service that actually starts and you'll notice here's an IP address that you can use um, if you got it on your network. You can use this IP address uh, and have the VNC viewer on your Windows or Linux computer and remote control the Pi from there. So that's what we're going to do for now. I'm going to connect to this 192.168.3.123 on port 5800. And um, I'm going to remote control this thing so that we can continue on. Okay, here I am upstairs. I'm remote controlling the MMDVM through a program called the VNC Viewer. You will download the VNC Viewer from the internet. I'll Google that, download it, install it, punch in the IP address of your Pi that you've determined, and and then you hit enter and then it'll ask you to connect the username is um, pi and the password is raspberry okay and you'll get to the the mmdvm uh, sorry to the raspberry pi screen and the first thing you want to do is check your time and set your time and date and things like that it's all in the control panel um, under uh, configuration the raspberry pi configuration um, your locale, etc. Um, set locale. Make sure that you, you know, if I, it's going to come set for East Coast time and USA and everything USA instead of the UK. And the the next step you're going to initiate is you're going to have to. Um, what I would do is the update all feature here under the ZUM modem section. When you do an update all, what it's going to do is it's going to talk to the GitHub and it's going to get the latest greatest code. And here we go with the latest greatest code. Here we go. It's downloading it. Um, and it's thinking hard. And then the next step you're going to do once you've downloaded the latest greatest code is you're going to uh, flash the latest firmware to the MMDVM modem to the Arduino Do, and to do that, we'll show you here the Arduino Do pieces of the uh, software that are on this image. And basically, if you have the cable connected to the Pi and to the programming port of the Arduino Do. This is going to work out for you. Uh, you you should be able to uh, flash the latest greatest firmware, and uh, and then begin uh, begin playing, editing the other files. So we're going to let this go through. I'll come back with this uh, video when it's uh, when it's done. 
All right, so now the update ensued and it just closes the terminal window. And the next step you want to perform is an update to your Arduino Do. Uh, this will flash the, the firmware that's on your Arduino uh, directly to, to the Arduino uh, to make the modem. Uh, basically programming the do to talk to the ZUM board that's on top of it and um, hopefully this thing will uh, kick into high gear and show us everything so yeah here's the here's the uh, code that is downloaded uh, from that update and the do is already set up for you to talk to your uh, the Raspberry Pi. Uh, uh, what you want to do here is you'll want to do a compile and up, upload upload this program. You just hit this arrow and um, it should talk to the notice at the bottom of the screen there it says Arduino do programming port on dev TTY ACM0. That's the programming port on the Arduino do if you don't have it hooked up to the right port you won't see this and uh, really need to have it hooked up to that port it's the the one in the video to the right if you take a look at the hookup again so you just hit upload and then it'll start compiling and it might come up with this crap here and you can just close that out um, basically you just want to use the version that um, when they wrote this this uh, program it's written for a specific version of the the do and the Arduino software there's different there's different versions of this um, Arduino um, IDE interface uh, and you want to use the version that is most compatible with with what you're doing so any rate moral of the story here compile it by hitting the right arrow, upload, and then bingo, it'll flash the newest version of the uh, software, and you'll be good to go. I ha already have the version that's most new on this image as of, as of today, um, February the 5th, 2017, and should work out for you. Once you get that flashed, at that point, um, the Arduino is ready to rock and roll and then the next step you're going to do is go into the configuration of your any file you're going to uh, change these the call sign to your club uh, or your repeater call sign uh, your frequency your tra transmit and receive frequency on the repeater in this case I have it at 439 and uh, receive and uh, transmit on the repeaters 434 and um, the latitude and all that stuff um, the height I think is is um, necessary for the Brandmeister network and you go to Brandmeister and, and it talks to Brandmeister if it doesn't have a height doesn't think you've got any any uh, uh, you doesn't think you have an antenna and the power as well so um, those two things are kind of important. The then you have the ports and things, but um, you can leave this leave this alone per se, except for the part of your ID. There's my ID um, for my repeater, and you can go through here and enable the other features. I have the System Fusion Network turned on, the P25 network fired up. And it'll use this Nexteon display if you want to hook a Nexteon display up. So there you have that. Once you've got the MMDVM any set up, the next step you want to do is um, a calibrate tool. So you, you click the calibration, and this thing should launch. Uh, I must have a... Uh, if it doesn't launch, then you know there's another problem. We're going to stop the host. Must have the background service started. So hit stop. I'm gonna stop both the uh, the program from running. Once that's stopped, basically should be able to run the uh, calibration tool. Come on, calibration. There we go. So 
if I, I'm into this and I'm in front of the, um, the modem, you can toggle on and off the transmit and you'll be able to see your lights flash and things should show. Uh, and you can actually tune in uh, with your, at this point, you can tune in and um, use your retail SDR um, tool and uh, watch, watch the signal that's coming out of your, of your radio. Uh, because there's a tone that's going to be playing uh, on this this calibration tool, and you'll you, you know you can tune it in that way. I did it the ghetto way when I did mine. I uh, uh, held in the uh, transmit on my radio and just kept tweaking the transmit pot very so slowly until I started seeing activity uh, on the terminal screen on the MMDVM uh, host. Program, which I'll show you here. I'm just going to quit this. Q for quit. Um, go into the MMDVM software here. Uh, start, or you could do over here, you can do this one. I put a little shortcut to do the start. Hopefully that's going to work. I don't know. Let's see. Oh, there you go. Okay. So there it goes. Um, I just create a little shortcut there for people because sometimes the menus are a pain. Well, any anyway, rate here, here's where, you know, you'll, you can actually watch your radio if it's talking to your repeater properly. Um, you're good to go. Uh, this is it. Here's what you're going to hear when you try to transmit and your repeater is not functional or it's not, uh, well, it's functional, but it's not synchronizing. This is kind of what it sounds like. You hear the tick, tick, uh, basically that is a uh, situation where it's not talking to the MMDVM or the MMDVM is not uh, not running, and you may be seeing a CB uh, KS something or other on the screen is down. A uh, couple reasons for that you might you know you have to check your MMDVM settings, but um, the other uh, reason. The reason that was my problem was that the transmit pot was not tuned properly and it takes a little while to tune it in and a lot of patience with it as well. You've got to tune it like you're um, just kind of adjusting it a gnat's leg width each time you turn it to the right so it's a real, uh, you can't breathe too heavy when you're tuning it just to give you a sample of how sensitive that potentiometer is. Okay, on this video I'm going to show you how the ZUM reacts and what happens on the screen so you can see successful transmission. First of all, I'm going to use my radio here to pick the contacts and I'm going to scroll down and I have the echo private is what I have it called and I'm going to make a call to that here we go. This is KC3 FOW testing. KC3 FOW testing. Okay, now watch. The screen is rolling. This is KC3 FOW testing. KC3 FOW testing. And here's the, the zoom board. Both lights are on. It goes off. That's a proper transmission. And here's the front of the repeater. As I key up, watch what happens. And there's a transmission going on right now. Here we go. I'm going to choose my contact. Again, I'm going to do echo private. This is KC3 FOW testing. KC3 FOW testing. FOW. That's not around that lake, just on the other side. Uh, you can hit Bennett Road, is the first road after that around that lake. That's the road my parents' house was on. Um, we still go to the Adirondacks every year, uh, every summer. We go.